Drilling, a compound angled hole. This is video two of a four part video series on how to mill compound angles and how to drill compound angles. Make sure you go back and check out the other videos. Okay, let's get started right now. Compound hole. Calculations using the distance from hole to hole and height. Our setup is going to look similar to this. We're going to need to calculate our tilt and rotation. The end result is we want to find the gauge block height for A and the gauge block height for B. Uh, rotation. Before we get into this, let's talk about the max amount of rotation we want to use. The maximum amount of rotation we want to use is 45 degrees. Anything over 45 degrees, let's say our calculation came out to where we're using 60 degrees. If we're using 60 degrees, what we want to do is use the complementary angle from 60 degrees. So 90 minus 60 equals 30. So therefore our complementary angle is going to be 30. Instead of having a really tall 60 degrees here, we would flip this over and use the 30 degrees here. It's just a better setup for our sign bars. Here's our print. We read on our print saying that it's half by half or 0 0.5, 0 0.5, whole distance, oops. So using the distance on the top view from hole to hole, we're going to create a box. And also our length of our box is 1.875. So here's what our ideal box or whole box looks like. So we want to find the length of the hole. So the length of the hole is going to be from the top corner down to the bottom corner. So the red line represents the length of our hole. We're going to use this calculation. Type it into our calculator here. And our length is just over two inches, two inches four thou. Okay, so we're going to use principle five to switch our angles around for our rotation. So what we want to find is actually this little angle in here. So we're going to draw a line from here to here. Okay, let's label our box. So we have our height, we have our depth, and we have our width. So if this is the angle we want to find, this is our depth and this is our width here. So we want to calculate this tiny little angle right inside here. I'm pretty sure you guys looking at this number, you know exactly what that angle is going to be, but let's go through the numbers anyways. Tan, so we're going to go second function tan. 0.5 divided by 0.5 and we come up with 45 degrees. So this is our theoretical setup and this guy here is what we're actually going to cut in our shop. We're going to be using a 45 block to cut our piece. Okay now we need to calculate our gauge block height. So sine 45 times 3 is 2.1213. So our A gauge block is calculated. Now we need to calculate our tilt. Our tilt angle is going to be this, it's very hard to see, this small angle right here. So it's going to be this angle here, but using the red line. So we have our height, our red line is going to be our hypotenuse. So we're going to use cos, second function cos, and it's just a little over 20 degrees, 20.67. 
Now using a 5 inch sign bar we need to calculate our gauge block setup. So using a 5 inch sign bar we're going to calculate our gauge block height to be 1.7649. So we have our two gauge block heights. Now the difficult part about setting this up is how we find the actual location that we're going to drill our hole in. Uh, you can use scribed lines, you can use a wiggler, there's a few other ways of doing this. But we're going to be using a tooling ball. And the nice thing about a tooling ball is you can indicate it and move over a certain distance and it'll go exactly where you want to go. Compared to scribed lines, you're kind of hitting and missing. You can't indicate it at all. You can use a wiggler or an edge finder with a point, but it's still quite difficult to locate actual lines. So we're going to use a tooling ball. That's why there's a hole here that's been drilled and reamed. So our tooling ball looks similar to this. So we did the calculations for you already. We're going to move over in X this amount and over in Y this amount. So here's our tooling ball. We're going to indicate the tooling ball and move to position. And we're spot on. Well, I hope that you enjoyed video two of a four-part video series. Don't forget to go back and check out the other videos. Also, if you want to see other great videos, don't forget to check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Just click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. You have a great night.